and welcome back to Overbooked. I'm Amanda and today we're gonna to be reviewing the book Women Talking by Miriam Toes. Women Talking is a book that is based off of real events that happened in a Mennonite colony in Canada in a community called Bolivia and there was a series of events that happened where numerous women were found to be raped or molested by men in their community and at first these women would wake up with pain or bleeding or fogginess and when they would complain about it to somebody they would just be told a way that this was just signs of God punishing them for their sins or some other way to relate it back to their religion but it was later come out that it was men in their community that was that were raping them with and drugging them with an animal anesthetic and these men were actually tried and convicted in a Bolivian court and this book is a fictional response to those events that Miriam Toes felt like she had to write and in this book Miriam has a male author August detail these women's thoughts and feelings by taking minutes during their meetings that they have in a two-day window where they have to make a decision on what to do after it comes out and these men are now being held in a jail awaiting trial and they want to make a decision before these men can come back to the community and try to make a decision that it would be beneficial to them and their well-being. To start off right off the bat I want to say that it was hard for me reading this book of such female importance, I felt like, and such important female conversations to have it narrated by a male. And I felt like I didn't like that aspect of this book and I still feel indifferent about it. But I think what the point of that, having that presence in this book was because in this Mennonite community, women were not allowed to read or write. They're all illiterate. They can't read or they can't, um, you know, take their own minutes or write down what's happening. In this kind of environment, one of like the reviews I was reading was like, it was where in this small window of time, the women were the powerful decision makers and August the male was somebody who got to write down their story versus where a lot of the time it's the man who has those powerful story to tell and it's a female writing down their story. So I thought that was an interesting concept and I think I kind of got more on board with it and felt like you could see more of the conversations happening and everything um, in full, like coming out and playing from August writing this all down. But I don't think I would have hated if I would have gotten some thought or perspectives from some of the female characters in the book and I think I really would have enjoyed that aspect. That's not the book we got and I think that's a reason why I would like to take it down a bit. I think this is a great amazing book to read. So thought-provoking, so such a book that makes you just really want to think. The only thing I think that I just didn't really like is I didn't get to see or hear any of the thoughts internal thoughts of these women. It's the only thing I kind of feel like I didn't like and I feel like a lot of people from reading reviews on Goodreads or seeing other reviews is that that was kind of their harp on it too. And I think there was a purpose for August and like I stated before and I think there's other purposes or reasonings behind it. So I can't just like smash it because I just haven't taken the time to really think about that and read about that. I really do like the explanation that it's like he has to write down their story of this important event. I do really like that. I liked soaking that in. So like I said, it, this book details like a two day window where these women have to make a decision. And in the beginning of the book, we see the three options they feel that they have. They start off by, since none of them can write, the women draw these three options and it's, they can either do nothing, stay and fight or leave. And you can kind of see here, I, throughout these two days, you hear them discussing and trying to figure out which option is best for them and their community and their children and their safety. And it's a really, really hard decision for these women to make. And I think on first glance, a lot of us would be like, you would just need to, you just need to leave. 
And I think there's a lot of us too that would feel a lot of anger and would want to lash out and want to take our aggressions and our, our hate and our anger out on the people that hurt us. And so it almost seems like the two last options are the only options and then that just staying and doing nothing is absurd. But I think you have to get into the mindset of these women and this community and this religion and that if they stay and do nothing, they're told that they have to forgive these men. When these men come back, they have to forgive them because in their religion, the only way to be accepted into heaven and accepted by God is you have to forgive every, people's sins. And if they harm you, you, you just you have to forgive them. If you can't forgive somebody, then you're, you won't be accepted into heaven. A lot of these women are finding difficulty with accepting that, but I think a lot of these women who are born and raised in this religion and it is something that they've grown with and they that's the only thing they know, it almost seems like that's the most obvious choice. And I think that we have to really respect that choice as well. It's not the choice that I wouldn't personally make, but I think if you're in that situation, you have to think about your life and your spirit out your spirituality and the almost consequences of you not doing that seems worse than the consequences of you know leaving or trying to start another life and that's another thing too is that these women have to think about since they theoretically have no education they don't have any skills i guess outside of this community i think they have to think about what they're going to do outside of this colony and that's kind of what I was thinking the entire time was I was really nervous for them when they would talk about their leaving option. And I would think about what are these women going to do when they get into this real world? Because it, this book takes, these events take place in like the mid 2000s. And this also reflects that. So it's almost like how are these women who, you know, don't know anything about technology, don't know anything about reading or writing or current events, going to be able to survive in, in a community outside of this colony. And that's kind of an interesting aspect as well. And I think these women are also thinking about that in the back of their mind and how they're going to do that. And I was reading, I was watching another book reviewer do this book and she mentioned the line of one of the older women when they were having this discussion. And I think it is true in that thought process and it is a beautiful sentiment is that this woman, this older woman, and she was very sick and she was, you know, the women had to look after her while they were having these discussions was saying, you know, even if we leave, I know that I will not survive this journey, but this leaving for me and this journey for me isn't for me to get to this other side or um, get to a better life. For me, being on this journey or just even starting this journey is something that I can provide for the women that come after me. And I think that was a really, really beautiful way of putting it is that yes, leaving is gonna be very hard. Yes, leaving may be very difficult. Yes, finding a means of survival outside of this colony is gonna be just extremely difficult, but it's almost as if these women are not, they're not going through these difficulties and this journey itself for themselves, they're going through it so these women that come after them do not have to go through it. And I found that very, very um, thought provoking and so um, just so well said and spoken. And it made me think of what I would do in that situation because I think, I think, I, I, I think we're all very selfish beings. And I think that in a sense, if I was in that conversation, I would be really disappointed that I would have to go on a journey that I wouldn't enjoy the fruits of my own labor. It would be somebody that would come after me or even come two generations after me that would finally start enjoying what I sacrificed for them and for myself. And I think that's a very hard decision to make and a very hard viewpoint and pill to swallow um, that you won't, you're not gonna benefit out of anything that happens from this decision somebody else will. And so there's just a lot of conversations that encircle that. And obviously in this era of Me Too, the conversations that happened about how these women were treated and drugged was just really hard to read and so upsetting. It was very, um, I think a very timely piece as well. Um, I read this book for 
the Reading Women Challenge prompt number 24, reading a book that was awarded the Reading Women Shortlist Award in 2019. I also am reading this for a book club that I'm a part of with my family members and we are meeting tomorrow. So I'm very interested to see what kind of discussions come out of that and what the other girls in the group would have would have thought about this. And I, I'm curious to see what the other women in the group would have decided to do if they were in those exact scenarios. Part of me thinks that I would be torn between staying and fighting and leaving. I think in the end, I think I would have picked to leave. I think it would have been a very hard decision, especially in such a short time frame to make, but I think that's the decision I would have gone with. One other thing I want to mention is another hard thing that these women had to grapple with is that a lot of the women in the community didn't, they, want, they already decided they wanted to do nothing, that they were gonna stay and they were gonna forgive these men and they were gonna take them back into their homes and move on and they didn't wanna do anything else. I think that would be really hard for this group of women that's trying to make another decision because just in that aspect alone, I think it's hard because this colony is so, like, it's, I'm sure it's such a tight knit community. And these are women that you've grown up with. They call people, they call each other brothers and sisters, even though they're not related. You know, it's, these are your sisters that you've known your entire life and you have to leave them behind. I think that would be very hard. And not only these, other sisters and women, but just other family members. A lot of the decisions that were had to be made were, you know, if we're leaving, we're only taking children and women. There's no men involved. So a lot of these women had to leave brothers, husbands, um, friends, uh, just people they've known their entire lives goes into the decision of leaving. And so it's a very difficult thinking process to take in. I really, really, really enjoy this book. I definitely recommend it. It's a very well thought out and really well put together book. And I would definitely give it like four, four and a half stars. And even with a male narrator, I think it was just really, really well put together and had a lot of the thoughts and feelings of the of all viewpoints the women really laid out. So I definitely, definitely recommend Women Talking by Miriam Toes. And if you haven't read it, I strongly encourage you to go pick it up. And if you have, or if you are planning on it, let me know what you think in the comments below. I would love to hear them. And that is all for today. Thank you for watching. Make sure that you like this video and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you guys next time.